Welcome back, everyone. Uh, well, it's it's time again. Uh, looks like we've got possibly a uh, well, it's not possibly we're going to have a hurricane headed for Florida. We're not exactly sure where it's going to go in yet, but it is definitely on the way. Um, it's not uh, uh, developed storm yet, but it will be over the next day or so. When it goes over the Gulf of Mexico, there's nothing in the way to, to impede it. Um, and I just felt like going on, coming on and, and reiterating what I've said in the past. Uh, I made a video right before Hurricane Ian came in, and you know I I strongly encourage people that don't wait until the day or two before the hurricane hits to go and get your supplies. Uh, what I would recommend people to do, in the very least, in the very least, start getting supplies in June. June is the, be the official beginning of hurricane season. We don't usually have hurricanes in June or July. We do sometimes, but it's very rare. August and September, especially September, are the peak months. Um, and if you don't want to be, you know, out shopping a couple days before with the masses of people who don't know how to prepare themselves, if you don't want to be, you know, stuck without supplies that you need because everything's been bought, then, you know, in the very least, I encourage you to start earlier, but in the very least, you need to start in June. Every time you go to the grocery store, start, you know, buying a couple extra canned goods, you know, canned soup or canned vegetables. Um, start buying a couple extra things of water if you need. Like for me, I've we've got to have water at my house because I have a well, and if we lose electricity, then the pump doesn't work. So, you know, we need water, and so we have to maintain a, a stored amount of water so that we have something to drink and we have something to wash our hands with, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, just start start buying up stuff like beef jerky, um, anything like that that's non-perishable and can last for a while. Um, depending on what the date is, you might be able to buy, you know, some some potato chips or some pork brines or some dried, you know, roasted nuts of some kind, trail mix, any of that kind of stuff, dried uh, fruits and peanut butter, whatever you like with that. Just don't, you know, the, the idea is start in, at least in June and every time you go to the grocery store, buy a couple cans of this, a couple of jars of that and sit them aside, don't eat them, and then, you know, that way, if we do have a hurricane, and this doesn't just apply in Florida, and this doesn't just apply for hurricanes, I'm just speaking to that because I'm in Florida and we deal with hurricanes. When you do that, you know, you may have, unless you're a, a very hardcore prepper who has months of food already stored up, then you don't have to worry about it. But if you do that, there may be a couple of last minute things you have to buy, but for the most part, you're already set to go when there's a storm coming. And you don't have to stress, because the storm is gonna be stressful enough, you don't have to stress about making sure you've got supplies that you need. Uh, this doesn't just apply to food. Make sure you've got a stock of batteries, AA, AAA, D-cell, nine volt, anything that you're gonna need for flashlights, lamps, fans, anything like that, if you can get a generator, you know, it's best to, it's best to buy a generator. Um, when there's not a hurricane, when it's not hurricane season, you can probably find them cheaper. Uh, but, you know, make sure you've got that sort of stuff. Um, any sort of, you make sure you've got emergency plans in place if you need it. And uh, if you've got a generator, and any of that kind of stuff, make sure you've got enough extension cords and if you're going to board up your windows, if you don't have, you know, hurricane shutters or hurricane resistant windows, you need to board up your windows, make sure you've got the supplies to do it. You know, if you've got the, um, like for my house, we have the, the metal clips that we put on the side of the board 
boards and slide them into the windows so that we don't have to drill into our uh, stone, our, our concrete block. Um, but however it is that you secure those, make sure you've got that, make sure you've got plywood. Don't wait until the week of the storm and then try to rush to, you know, the hardware store and start buying up a bunch of uh, plywood because it's not going to be there, you know. People are going to be, or you're going to have to wait in extremely long lines for, you know, getting the wood and then checking out, and, you know, and the store's going to be crazy and people are going to be in the poor mood and it's just not worth it. I mean, unless for some reason you like that kind of thing, which, hey, more power to you. I question your sanity personally, but uh, more power to you. But I don't, I don't like dealing with those crazy crowds. I like to know that I have, you know, for the most part, I'm ready to go in the case of an emergency, such as a, such as a hurricane. And but with your, you know, with stuff like a camping stove, a gas stove, a grill, you know, plywood, all that stuff, that stuff's going to last you for years and years and years. With this, like the batteries and the food items and stuff, if you buy a bunch of this stuff to be prepared and you don't end up using it for a hurricane, then you just, you know, consume it like normal after the season's over. And then next season, it, well, it depends, you know, if you've got something that can last, you know, for a year or two, you may want to just put it aside just for hurricanes. But if not, you know, consume it, and then the next season, you start over again. It just makes it a lot easier on the pocketbook because you're not buying all these supplies all at one time. It makes it a lot easier on your sanity and on your nerves because you're not having to fight with uh, everybody that's trying to get out and do everything last minute. And, you know, it just it makes it a whole lot easier. And now all you have to worry about is, you know, making sure you're know, getting the boards up on your windows, making sure you've got all the... the the camping stove, make sure you've got all your lanterns and all that stuff ready to go, and now you can just wait it out. Um, of course, if it's a bad enough storm or you're on the coast, then I personally would recommend evacuating. But if it's if it's something that you're going to ride out, you're good to go. And then, you know, usually after the storm is over, within a day or two, you can get back out and you know, for my case, if we have no electricity, when Hurricane Ian came through, we uh, had our power line snapped, and so we didn't have power for a, a week. But, you know, we had friends and family that had water so we could go take showers and whatnot. Um, if you're also like me and you're on a well and then you lose water during a hurricane because you don't have power, you're going to need to have water stored up to, you know, like I said, wash your hands and stuff like that, but also to flush your toilets. Unless you use camping toilets when you don't need water, but if you're using a, your regular toilet, you're going to have to have water to flush the toilets. So what I would recommend is going to Home Depot or Lowe's or Ace or somewhere, getting those five gallon buckets and just getting a whole bunch of them, fill them with water. And you don't have to do this right before the hurricane, but you, you can. But fill them up with water. And what, what I do is I always have a couple in the house filled with water in case we just randomly lose power. But then we also have some that we keep like in our storage shed and that sort of thing to, or for, for these cases. So now we already have water stored up to use for our toilets. So just think ahead. You know, that, that's kind of what I'm trying to get across. And... It just hit me because I've seen some uh, seen some people I follow on, on Instagram and stuff talking about getting prepared. And, you know, I just left Walmart a minute ago and you know had to get a few last minute things. And you can already tell that the the, uh, the anxiety is starting to ramp up. And to me, it's needless anxiety to you know have to buy everything the day before storm hits when you could have already been prepared and you know now you can kind of just I hate to 
to say relax because it's not necessarily easy to relax before a hurricane, but now you can kind of relax and just get ready for the storm. You don't have to worry about getting to the store and buying everything and that sort of thing. So just think ahead, you know, keep this in mind. Think ahead and, um, like I say, start in January. January, not January. Well, yeah, I would say start in January, but start in June, June 1st. You know, when you go to the grocery store, if you go weekly, you know, buy a couple extra things every week. If you go monthly, however you do it, buy some extra things accordingly. Set them aside just for hurricanes. And then if you don't end up using them, you can consume them. And then you start it again the following hurricane season. So just keep that in mind. I know this is not garden related, but this is sort of just, uh, I guess you could say homestead related. It's, you know, it's just a living in Florida scenario and it's, you know, being a quote-unquote prepper has been given such a bad rap that people don't want to, you know, they, they kind of shy away from it because, oh, you look like one of those crazies on TV. Well, this has nothing to do with being a crazy on TV. This is just real life. This is what we deal with and, you know, there are ways that you can get prepared accordingly so that you're not stressed to the absolute max so that's my recommendation take it or leave it if you've got a better plan then do that um but yeah hopefully you know my prayers to anyone who's about to go through this like i said we don't know exactly where it's going in it's a pretty widespread still um and we don't know exactly what the strength is going to be when it hits but uh, my prayers for everyone who is about to deal with this uh for no you know, no deaths, obviously, no injuries, as limited damage as possible. Uh, I hope that everybody can get through it and, you know, just pick up, you know, clean up right afterwards and get back to life and not have a, a major thing to worry about. So anyways, I will be back, you know, probably after the storm passes. Hopefully I don't lose a lot of my garden, um, but we'll see what happens. Anyways, until next time, take care. Thanks for watching as always, and if you like what you see, then hit the subscribe button. Thanks.